Hey there everyone, welcome back to Dan Cave and welcome to part two of the Lexus Tamiya LFA in 24 scale build series. So part two is uh, the second part, funnily enough. That's also the last part uh, as we actually get the, the build finished in part two. So uh, if you've been here before and you've seen part one, of course you know part one covered the bodywork, uh, getting it prepped, painted, primed, painted, cleared. Also managed to get on and do a lot of the chassis engine transmission work. Uh, so this part's going to get on with basically all the rest of the bits. So that's stuff like the interior, uh, parts that fit to the bodywork, flat and polish the bodywork, and then final assembly. Uh, so yeah, so part two, and we'll get the build to the finish, and you'll see the final photos at the very end. But don't go there yet. I'd like you to watch all the way through. So uh, so yeah, so. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Good to have you back. If you're a new viewer, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like button. And even if you're a returning viewer, don't forget to hit the like button. Of course, all comments are always welcome. So uh, feel free to uh, pop a comment down below as well. So, yeah, I'm not going to hang about. Let's head on over and let's crack on with part two. Uh, and I'll be back at the end for some final thoughts. Over we go. So to start off, it's the diving into the box to find all the interior parts. So things like the seats, the steering wheel, dashboard, center console, uh, gear lever, all those kind of parts. So all of them can get removed from the sprue and duly cleaned up as per usual. So you can remove any of the sprue attachment points using a knife, checking for any seam lines using uh, as seen on screen uh, scalpel to remove any of the seam lines and sprue attachments and then use a sanding stick to sand back any unsightly seam lines so once i'm happy all that cleanup is done it's over to spray booth and i'm going to prime everything in ump gray primer uh, i do apologize for the wobbly camera uh, for some reason, my camera mount was picking up the vibrations of the motor in the spray booth, which it normally doesn't, but seems to be doing on this occasion. So for the interior, I've used some micro balloons on the bottom of the seat. Uh, so they were laid down over some, I think, Tamiya X22 clear. Let this set, and now I'm over spraying with some Revell Aqua Bright Blue. So this is going to be the accent color for the interior and also some of the other parts. So once you spray over the micro balloons, you get very much a textured finish. Uh, not quite as good as flocking, but still gives a kind of a textured carpety type finish to it. So this blue is also used on the brake calipers. So they were previously primed in UMP grey as well. And don't forget on the rear calipers, there's the main caliper and then the, I'm guessing, the handbrake brake caliper as well. So a couple of coats of blue and that goes down perfectly well over the UMP grey. Uh, seats get the same colour. So they'll be semi-gloss black on the back of the seats. Uh, there's a few other trim colors. And the rocker covers also get a coat of the blue as well. Now, I did prime these in black, but the blue actually goes out very, very well over the black primer as well. And that just adds a little bit of color to the engine bay. So with all that blue paint done, you can remove the masking from around the chassis tub. As you can see, we're left with a blue carpeted floor. Now you can see that some of the micro balloons do kind of show uh, towards the edges, but don't worry, none of that's going to be visible once the interior is in. So the, the interior door cards as well, so they've had a little bit of blue trim on them. That's now going to be masked up. 
and that's basically so the major part of the door card can get sprayed in i think it's ump black primer i've used so not a quite not quite a pure matte black so the back of the seats quite complex masking so just decided well they're not going to be very visible because there's no rear seats so i'm just going to brush paint the semi-gloss black from Ravel Aqua on the back of the seats. So a little bit of careful brush painting. So the paint is thinned a little bit with some water just to make it flow a little bit better. A couple of coats of that and that will look absolutely fine. So the dash has a semi-gloss black trim piece on it as well. So that's been masked up. And the seats as well have some shinier black compared to the UMB black primer so I'm using x18 semi-gloss black I'm also using that for the wheels now the chrome on the wheels are spot on uh bleach didn't touch them so I washed them off and I'm just going straight over the chrome with the semi-gloss black it will be fragile but it should be okay reasonably happy that that will come out absolutely fine so with all that semi-gloss black sprayed it's time to remove masking once again as you can see we're left with a very nice basically three-tone door card and a little bit of masking on the dash can also be removed to show that kind of center console area in black so once all those parts have had a little bit of curing time, there's a couple of decals to be added for the instrument cluster as well. It's time to start assembly. So using CA glue to assemble pretty much everything on the dash. So that kind of center head up display pod, uh, steering wheel and the column for the steering wheel. There's also the paddles for the shifters on the back. And then adding in the pedals as well inside the interior. So once again, CA glue is the glue of choice. And with those few parts in, you can now pop in the main dashboard. So once again, it's a bit of CA glue that sets that in place. So the top of the center console is next. That pops straight in. And then of course, the seats themselves can be added. Now, obviously, any flocking or micro balloons in my case obviously will obscure any of the attachment points. Uh, but don't worry, it's CA glue. They will stick. Just obviously need to be careful if there's any tight clearances because the thickness of the micro balloons or flock could affect the fit. But in this case, it's not critical. So I can start assembling the kind of major chassis components now. Uh, so they get attached to the interior tub. The interior door cards get added as well. They pop straight in place. And then there's a little bit of detail painting on the brake discs. So once again, it was just a trade-off between the amount of time spent masking versus just giving them a couple of coats, coats of Ravel Aqua Steel, uh, thinned with a little bit of water and brush painted on. So they can be set aside to dry. Rocker covers can now be added to the engine. Once again, using a little bit of CA glue, both sides are added. And that's the engine giving a little bit of life to it with the blue rocker covers. So of course, to attach the brake disc, of course you need to add the poly caps. So they go, they go into the brake discs, into the back, and then a bit of CA glue to attach the brake disc to the hubs. 
Now, obviously, you need to check that you've got the right orientation of the brake disc, the right sides, etc. But just follow the instructions. It's reasonably straightforward. And all four brake discs are added to the running gear. So the interior wheel trims can now be added. And then, of course, it's on to a variety of other pieces that need to get attached to the chassis, such as fans and radiators. I think that's the interior boot lid as well. So all of those parts get removed from the sprue with the usual cleanup. Once the cleanup is done, it's over to the spray booth and they're all primed using UMP black primer. Once again, shot through the apex. So all of these parts get probably two to three coats of black primer. And of course, you could ask how does the, the, the acrylic primer go down over the, the PE parts? Absolutely fine. Can be fragile, but it does go down over them. Absolutely no problem. So once those parts have been fully cured, uh, they can now be added to the chassis itself. And once again, CA glue is the adhesive of choice for adding all these parts. So there's a couple of radiators for the front and a couple of fans that go on the rear. So there's a whole bunch of other parts still to be done. So there's various parts that go under the engine bay, all the kind of plastic trim you see on a modern car. There's the inserts for the grills as well on the rear. So again, it's the usual process off the sprue, clean up the sprue attachment points using a scalpel blade and then using some sanding sticks to remove any seam lines. Once I'm happy with that, it's once again back over to the spray booth for some UMP black primer. Now the finish on these is predominantly called out a semi-gloss black. The UMP black primer works fine for me as a semi-gloss black paint. It also gives me the option to use something like X18, which got a bit more of a sheen to it and then even go as far as to use gloss black but in this case for this kit the umb black bomber will suffice so while those parts are set aside to cure it's time to go back to the body that was 2k in the first part so that's plenty of days of curing and begin the process of removing any high points any dust particles basically flatting it back uh, just to remove any imperfections, but also to improve the overall look of the finish. Now, I will say with this Pro Scale 2K, it's a much thinner 2K. It doesn't kind of gather around the ends of panel lines as much as other 2Ks do. So it does have a very good look after it's been cured immediately after airbrushing. Uh, in some cases, I was even debating whether I would flat it back at all. However, I've started the process, so it's worth kind of doing the complete body. So progressing through 8,000 micromesh, 12,000 micromesh. I think I go back to 6,000 for the bonnet because uh, there is a high spot where there's some dust on the bonnet and a 6K. I'll just knock that down a little bit quicker than the 8K. But again, using plenty of water, light, even pressure, let the sanding material do the work, wipe down any water, check the surface and continue until you're happy. Then progress through the grades all the way up to 12,000. And once that's all done, the body's been cleaned, it's time to move on to the UMP polishing compound. So starting with number one, which is the coarser compound. Uh, using an old t-shirt of mine, good cotton t-shirt, works very well as a polishing cloth. So I'm just working that polish into the roof, waiting until it dries off and hazes off completely, and then we can buff it back using either a separate piece or a separate part of the material. So I'm going to work around all the panels on the car that need attention. Anything of sanded, you want to polish back again, even all the small parts as well. 
as just to make sure we get that absolutely perfect crystal clear finish at the end. Now, as I said, out of the gun, this ProScale 2K has been absolutely spot on. This, in essence, was a minimal amount of work to get it polished up. So once I've done polish number one, it's on to number two from the UMP polishing system. And that's an even finer polishing compound. And this is essentially what brings back that full shine on the bodywork on the, the 2K that's gone down. And this, this looks absolutely fantastic as it just shines up. Same process as with number one. Use a plenty of material, not too much. Wait until it hazes off and then buff it back. And of course, that two brush is there to make sure I can clean out any of the polish that's gotten in the panel gaps. Now, once that's done, there's a few areas of the body that will be painted in semi-gloss black. So there's a little bit of masking required. Fairly intricate around the rear bumper area. But once it's done, use a bit of cling film to finish off the bulk of that masked area. You can also mask up uh, the clear parts. Tamiya does include a mask set for this kit. Bit of careful application. And then fill in any of the gaps with some regular Tamiya masking tape. Or in this case, the wider kip tape that I use. And head on over to the spray booth and get that semi-gloss black down. Now, once again, for semi-gloss black, I'm using UMP Black Primer. And that just adds that lovely amount of contrast for either the clear parts or the trim parts on the vehicle. So once sprayed, all of these parts can be set aside for a little bit of curing. Masking can be removed, but assembly can continue on the chassis and running gear. So once again, CA glue, check to make sure you've got the right attachment points. And then that entire drivetrain, exhaust, engine, suspension, steering, all of that gets assembled to the chassis in one go. A little bit of pressure. And that CA glue will hold it securely. So once I'm happy with that, once I'm happy the paint is cured from the earlier steps, I can also get on and start adding all the, the grills and mesh that need to be installed inside the bodywork. So there's the insert for the front grill. There's also mesh inserts for some of the intakes. So once again, CA glue is used just to locate them in place. Once that's done, I'm happy all that CA glue is cured. I can now also add the clear parts inside the body. So there's very positive locating points for this glass. So I can just use a little bit of CA glue on those positive attachment points. And that should be sufficient to hold the clear parts in place. So there's a little bit of sitting there waiting for it to cure and bite. Once that's done, you can now start adding some of the lighting uh, pods that have come with the kit. Uh, so there's a couple for the indicators on the side. Uh, there's some inserts for headlights, the rear lights, all of which get added with a little bit of CA glue. And they slot in absolutely perfectly. So, once again, there's a number of parts that need to be added to the outside. So under the rear, rear lights, there's these panels, which have, of course, been primed in UMP Black Primer, which in this particular kit I'm using is a equivalent to a semi-gloss black. So once I'm happy all those parts are in, I can also get the body assembled onto the chassis. So there is a couple of locating points, a bit of careful manipulation, checking all around and make sure nothing is failing. I'm not going to damage any paintwork. Just carefully and slowly making sure it fits inside that bodywork.
Now, the tight bit is just making sure the exhaust tips line up with the exhaust on the back box as shown. But once we get everything settled in, everything lines up correctly and that's all perfectly good. So once that's all together, you can also put the wheels on the car as well. So they were painted in X18 semi-gloss black earlier. The tires just pop straight over the hubs. It's absolutely fine. No issues whatsoever. Poly caps are inside the brake discs. So you can just put a little bit of pressure just to get those wheels to pop in through the poly caps. And they'll be nicely secured in place. So with a little bit of manipulation, just to locate them properly, all those wheels are attached. There's a few parts on the under tray need to be added. And of course the bonnet as well. And all in all, that results in a finished Tamiya Lexus LFA. So that'll go off for a final little bit of a polish using the UMP gloss spray. Gloss spray, polish spray. That'll help remove any unsightly fingerprints, etc. And also give a little bit of extra shine to the body as well. But all in all, happy with that overall finish. So let's go and have a look at how the final photos came out of this Tamiya Lexus LFA. So that's the box art. And that's how it's come out in my model. So I've gone very much for a kind of understated black wheels, black badge on the front. Uh, I've kind of left the decals off as well around the side of the car, kept it reasonably kind of understated, which helps, I suppose, make that gray pop even more. And it is an absolutely beautiful gray at that pro scale mixed up for me. So let's head back to me for the final thoughts on this build. So there we have it. That is the 24 scale Tamiya Lexus LFA completed in Pro Scale Kia Wolf Grey with Pro Scale 2K Clear and a whole bunch of Tamiya Revell Alclad colours used throughout. Uh, generally, I, you know, it's an awesome kit. Re it really is an awesome kit. And I, I'm, I'm sure, as you know, as, as you know, I've mentioned throughout, that the fit on the kit is spot on. Uh, it's quite a level of detail. It's quite a complex build. Uh, it, it's it's not your kind of standard easy curbside kit from from AMT. Uh, the the fit is just awesome. Uh, everything goes together like a dream. But there's a lot of intensive work to get everything painted and prepped and and ready and get it all together. Uh, I was never a big fan of the Tamiya L of the Tamiya. So I was never a big fan of the Lexus LFA itself as a car. Uh, don't know why it, it never quite grabbed me but as a kit this is awesome and just because of the kind of significance of you know it was for a group build on ISM for the 50 shades of grey group build it was also a bit of a memorial for Gary as well uh, with Gary Pashley having passed away uh, last year to uh, so, so, so all those kind of things kind of you know motivated me got me past the fact that I'm not a big fan of the car and I thoroughly enjoyed it uh, really did enjoy the build uh, absolutely love the way it's come out and the look of it. It's exactly what I had in mind. The grey is maybe not the original grey I wanted. That went a bit awry, so we went with a slightly different grey. But, you know, getting a chance to use Pro Scale paints as well was awesome. They worked an absolute treat. And the clear coat is probably the best clear coat I've done. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, absolutely over the moon with how it's come out. So, so there we go. That's my final thoughts on the build. Uh, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and like, and for everyone, of course, don't forget to like, don't forget to feel free to leave a comment and all that kind of stuff. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for sticking with it if you've got this far. Uh, and I'll see you very, very soon in another video at some point. So, uh, yeah, bye bye for now. Thank you.